Hi, this is Gary. On this episode of MacMost Now, let's take a look at the new MobileMe service and how it'll be different than .Mac. So the really big thing about MobileMe is this push technology that will allow you to sync data, that's your contacts, your calendar events, and your email between three locations. That's your computer, an online web interface, and your iPhone or iPod Touch. So when you say update a calendar event on your computer in iCal, it will also appear updated on your iPhone. This will happen without syncing the iPhone at all. It will automatically be pushed so it will go from iCal up to the internet to me.com and then back down to your iPhone automatically. Now where this is most impressive is mail. This means that you'll be able to get mail at me.com or your old .Mac address and if you read it on your iPhone it will show up as read on your computer in mail. Not only that, but this will work in applications beyond mail. It promises to work in Outlook, Outlook Express, and Windows Mail for Windows users. And it may in fact work in other mail applications as well. We have yet to see. Plus with the web interface you have a third place to go and check it. So say if you're traveling and you're at a hotel you can log in to your me.com account, go ahead and check your email, and next time you use mail on your computer or on your iPhone you'll see that email has been read, been updated, been put into different folders, all sorts of things. So this will make it a lot easier for people to keep up with their email without having to worry about constantly syncing back and forth with different devices. What remains to be seen is how well this will work with non-me.com email addresses. In other words, if you have your own domain and you have email stored there, will this new system be able to go ahead and get that email and allow you to send email flawlessly? There's a couple ways you can do it and it will be interesting to see if any of them are supported. Another thing that's being talked about a lot is the new photo gallery that will be in MobileMe. Now we already have photo galleries, several different types of them in fact, with the existing .Mac service. From the very beginning you could actually put photos on little mini websites stored in .Mac. And now you've got ability to be able to publish them very easily from iPhoto and be able to publish slideshows and be able to publish somewhat updatable photo galleries. It will be interesting to see how the new mobile me galleries work. It looks like you will be able to easily publish from iPhoto and when somebody adds a photo, if you allow that, in your gallery it will automatically be pulled back down to iPhoto for you. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works. Certainly it can replace photo galleries for a lot of people that they've set up on their own websites and it may replace something like Flickr for a lot of people. But that remains to be seen and also remains to be seen how social this is. Is it easy to post a photo, for instance, to Facebook? Or is it easy for somebody to search all the mobile me photos to find some interesting shots? I'm also worried how this is going to affect old photo galleries that have been up there. Now I've already got photo galleries stored under the last two types of systems and I really like to keep those up there. There are pictures of vacations and pictures of uh, family events and things like that. But if worse comes to worse, just have to republish all of those. Another big part of .Mac that will be part of mobile me is the iDisk. So the iDisk is like an external drive that exists up at the .Mac server. So you can store files there or use it as a backup space or use it as a place to share files. It's very useful and you share that space with stuff that you publish to the web. So a lot of people use the 10 gigs of space they have now or 20 gigs of space they have under mobile me to go ahead and publish something like podcast. One question is what will the bandwidth restrictions be on the files stored on your iDisk? Right now they're set pretty high specifically for use for podcasters. So you can put large audio and video files up on your .Mac account and set them up as a podcast. Let's hope that those bandwidth restrictions go even higher or at least they stay the same. Another thing the push technology in MobileMe will do is allow you to sync email, contacts, and events over multiple computers. So if you have more than one computer like say a desktop machine and a laptop or you have one at home or at work, you can sync all that stuff between them. Not only that, but you'll be able to do it with PCs as well. It works with Outlook and with Vista. This could be super useful for somebody like me, but the devil's in the details. We'll have to see exactly how it works, whether or not it's useful. With MobileMe, a few things from .Mac are going to be dropped. One of them is the .Mac slides, one way of viewing photos in .Mac, uh, the ability to view your bookmarks on the web, uh, also support for Panther, for some things at least and the ability to sync things between multiple computers is going to be replaced by the new push technology. So there may be some unexpected changes. Also iCards are going away. I uh, never really used them. Have you? Looking at the strategy here it's kind of interesting with the rumors that AT&T is no longer going to be giving a cut 
of the subscriptions for iPhone users to Apple, the $99 a year might be a way for Apple to get recurring revenue from iPhone users. I mean, after all, I can't imagine having an iPhone and not spending the extra money to get all these additional features. Well, anyway, if you do plan on upgrading, one thing you may want to think about is buying Dot .Mac right now. You can get it pretty cheaply. Matter of fact, Amazon regularly has it for $70. And Apple promises that anybody with a Dot .Mac subscription right now will be able to upgrade completely over to MobileMe. But it's likely that those cheap $70 accounts will probably go away. Thanks to Daniel for that tip. Anyway, until next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.